Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer. We're going to talk about the differences between strong acids and weak acids and uh, calculation typically of the pH of a weak acid. But So what is the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid? Well, it turns out that a strong acid, let's review that. Um, we lost ourselves a little marker there. Okay, and all right, so what does strong acid do? Dilute strong acid goes to completion. So it would just be like H plus and X negative. This guy here would just be H plus X negative, H plus plus X negative, H plus X negative. So a weak acid goes to what we call equilibrium. And typically speaking, they're very much reactant favored. So... In this case, whenever we track this, its K value is a ratio of the products over reactants. Since there's lots of reactants, we have a very small K value. So lots of reactants, very little product. So we might even just show it like this. Okay. I know there's some product there, but when you start to see some of the levels of how small the product is, then you might realize why we don't show them. Could you show one? Okay, you can. Maybe. Uh, I may not. But you surely wouldn't want to show two. Same thing goes here. We'll concentrate weak acid. H plus HX, HX, HX. H, X, I'd probably leave it like this. But if you feel the need, you could do 1 H plus and maybe 1 X negative. Keep in mind, what is, when you take a beaker or maybe drink some something vinegary or whatever, or you stick your finger in some acid, okay, um, what, what, what's causing this thing to burn your finger or whatever? It's the H plus ions. So here, do you see it, any H plus ions? Well, we got one. Okay. Do you see any here? Well, we got one. So here we got a bunch. So in this case, keep in mind that um, the HX here is not acidic until it actually produces an H plus ion. So. There you go. That's important to note. All right, so acid-base conjugate pairs. So we got to realize that um, in acids and bases, they, they work together. They go back and forth, really. So this is my acid. Okay, and this is what I call the, con it's called the conjugate base. Conjugate base. And you should realize that this is the same substance. Okay, it's the same chemical. It's just given this guy an H plus ion. So now this guy is conjugate is this guy. So conjugate, sometimes I like to use the word neighbor. It's like the same atom, but just on the other side. And in this situation, we're going to call an acid, okay, an acid is what we sometimes refer to as a an H plus donor. And a base is what we call an H plus acceptor. And that's another way of sort of describing the inter interactions between an acid and a base. So this would be my acid. This would be my base. This would be my conjugate base. And this would be my conjugate acid. Okay. Write the reaction for hydrolysis of ammonia. Well, this is ammonium. So what would be the reaction going this way? That's what bases do. So again, I sometimes think of it, if whoever has the H plus is the acid. Whoever doesn't have it is the base. This guy has the H plus, an extra one here. Therefore, this is the acid. But once it loses it, it becomes this guy. Now it's a base. It can, it can accept one. So the, the ammonia can turn around, grab onto a to a base. Now it's going to get that from water. 
and it's going to produce NH4 plus plus OH negative. And if you want to make this look a little more complicated, you could say, okay, well, let's put the two reactions together. Okay, NH4 plus plus water yields NH3 plus H3O plus. These two reactions going back and forth looks like this cancels out, this cancels out, the water is just water, and we got water producing these guys. Of course, these guys will annihilate each other, and we all just sort of cancel out. Okay? They all just sort of, they are really the reverse of each other, so the reverse should kind of cancel each other out. So, a solution is a, uh, so is a solution of ammonia, or ammonium, acidic, or basic? That's the question. If they cancel each other out, which one is it? Well, it turns out we have this idea of strength, and that's something that strength and concentration are two things that will affect us, and it's something that we'll be talking about here momentarily. Okay? Um, strength meaning how how vigorously can you push towards products? How vigorously can you push back towards towards their side? Okay, so how do we measure the strength of an acid? Well, we use what's called a, our K value. It's either Ka or it would be a Kb. Okay. Now the Ka for this thing is is the hydrolysis. I, I've always wanted thought this should be written as Kah. Remind us, this is the acid hydrolysis, and this is KBH, but that, they never do that, but it's just one of my things. All right, so in this situation, we have, uh, it's going to be uh, NH3 plus H2O yields NH3 NH4 plus plus OH negative, and this is going to be NH4 plus plus H2O yields NH3 plus uh, H3O plus. This is the reaction that the acid will measure. This is the reaction that the base KB will measure. And whichever value is larger means who's stronger. Very close, but that's it. So again, the Ka times the Kb equals Kw. So this is a teeter-totter, and it balances once again on 1.0e to the negative fourth, negative seventh. Okay, so e, this is the teeter-totter point. Okay. So who is stronger? Would the so how do we measure the strength of acid? We use the, the K value. That this is the strength, the K value. Who's stronger? I don't know. We have, we have to look up and see who's got what Ka value. Okay, but they both can't be equally strong. One can't push one way, and the stronger than the other one pushes back. I mean, either one pushes hard and the other one pushes weak. They both can't be strong. Okay, so it's kind of a teeter totter here. So if I have, for example, let's just say this this thing here is, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll have that value pop up later, but. If you, if you give him one of these guys, it would just be the KW divided by the KA equals the KB, and the KW divided by the KB equals the KA. And you find, if you have one, you can solve for the correlating one. Okay. What would be the K of an acid where the conjugate base is equally strong? So, in that case, it would have to be where the KA would equal the KB, and that only happens when the KA or KB equal 1.0e to the negative seventh. Okay. All right. We'll have an example to try some of that in a moment here. Okay, now, so hydrofluoric acid. So what do we need to know to determine the pH of just a plain old solution? Okay, of just that. Well, I need two things. I need to know that how strong it is. And I need to know its concentration. So those are two things we need to know here. Let's try this out. Okay. Now again, HF I have here. That's common. It's pretty. It's got a pretty theatrical uh, history. Meaning that in Breaking Bad, uh, and you may or may not be familiar with Breaking Bad, but they dissolve a drug dealer with hydrochloric acid and saw six. Yes, saw six. Um, they have a torturing device. Uh, 
using hydrofluoric acid. So is hydrofluoric acid nasty because of its acidic properties? And the answer really is no. All right. It's not a strong acid. It's a weak acid. And here's the Ka value for hydrofluoric acid. Okay. So in this case, what's the reaction? Well, it's going to be HF plus H2O yields H3O plus plus F negative. So it's very weak reactant favored. So initial Stoich ratio end. In the end, most of my stuff's going to stay here. So is it very acidic? Well, not really because um, very little of this stuff is actually going to be placed over here. But this stuff is pretty nasty. H3O plus is nasty, so any amount you get is going to show up. You'll notice it. So how we solve this out? Pretty straightforward. My, I'm going to use my Ka expression here equals the concentration of H pluses, that's this guy, times the concentration of F negative over the concentration of HF. Just so you know, that's this guy. And, okay. So, with that being said, here we go, HF, this is 0.1, not playing a role, 0, 0, minus X, plus X, plus X, 0.1 minus X, X, and X. Of course, you know that plugging these guys in will equal 6.6E to the negative 4 equals X times X over 0.1 minus X. Now, it's not that difficult to solve this out, but because of the, such a small value here, we're going to use our shortcut rule. 6.6e to the negative fourth equals x squared over 0.1. Multiply by 0.1 and square root. And this will give you my x concentration. This might seem complicated at first, but you'll find that it never varies. It's always the same. 6.6e to the negative fourth divided by, or I should say, times 0.1, and then we're going to square root this guy, and I get 0 0.0081, 0 0.0081, 2 I believe, and that's moles per liter. Of course we know that number on our teeter-totter of 1.0e to the negative seventh, uh, that this thing is in fact acidic. Take the negative log of this value, all right, to find the actual pH. Negative log of this previous answer equals 2.09. All right, so equals 2.09, and this is on my acidic pH scale. So a couple things just to kind of notice here. One, we need to have a concentration. All right, we need to have a Ka value. That's really the only two things required to find the pH and or concentration of, an, of a weak acid. This tells me how much I start with, and this tells me how much I kick over. Now again, yes, the base, this is weakly basic, but we don't have any of it. In the end, we have a very small amount that, yes, it is pushing back, but this, that's all kind of wrapped into this calculation. All right, so... There we go. There's our math. And hope that's something similar. I got one less zero there. We'll see if I made a mistake there somewhere along the line. Well, I could have, but. All right. Again, which ones are our weak? Which ones are strong? So, of course, remember, these are the six strong acids. Also, the thing you might know is that the, strong, the weak acids have a Ka value. The strong acids go 100% to product. They don't need a Ka value. Ka is for things that go to completion. Think about that for a second. We have HX plus H2O yields H3O plus plus X negative. If your, if your reaction goes to completion, then it's going to be H3O plus or times X negative over my original HX, and this guy here is zero. So this is just going to be infinitely large. Okay, So it doesn't do any good. 
It's like saying if you make ten you know, hundred fifty dollars in your paycheck and you spend all of it, how much did you spend? Well you spent one fifty. You spent all of it. It's not a matter of somewhere in the middle. How do we model a weak acid? And we're kind of circling around here again. How I model weak acids, keep them together. We just kind of just do dilute weak acids, and the strong ones we typically just do more of them. Now again, there are H pluses here, and there are X negatives, um, but we don't always show them just for fear of being proportional. Uh, we're you know, it's very much to the reference side. So showing an H plus and an X negative here would show 30% ionization to product. That's just not what we have. Okay, so it's only reason why they wouldn't show them would be out of fear of having an un incorrect proportion. Because, I mean, think of it this way. If you have a K value that is, um, a K value that is, let's say, E then a fourth, okay, that's not exactly correct, but that's like 1 in 1,000. Meaning you would need to draw out 1,000 of those for one of my actual H plus ions. And that's a fairly strong weak acid. You could have some as E to the negative 10. That means it's a lot of pictures to be accurate. Okay, so who is stronger, HF or NAF? Okay, so the K value for this guy is that. All right, so once again, we have ourselves HF plus water yields H3O plus plus F negative. All right, and this guy is pushing this way, and of course the F negative is pushing back that way. All right, who's stronger? Well, our teeter-totter, Ka, times Kb equals Kw. Let's calculate out our Kb here quickly. Okay, so in this case, the K... Doing that to me. All right, so I'll leave it. It'd be 1.0 e to the negative 14th divided by 6.6 .6 e to the negative fourth, and go ahead and calculate. Okay, now this is going to be my k b for the base. Uh, so 1.0 e to the negative 14th divided by 1.0 e to the negative sixth, the negative fourth, and I get one e to the negative tenth. You, you might have been able to do that without doing the calculator. Okay, 1.0 e to the negative tenth. All right, so that means that my ka value, that my ka is this, and I didn't punch that in exactly right. I just did one point. Uh, yeah, it's close. Okay. I can redo that in here quickly. It's going to be 1.0 e to the negative 14th divided by 6.6 uh, .6 e to the negative 4th, and I get 1.51 e to the 11th. Okay, so a little bit different, but uh, 1.51 e to the negative 11th. Okay, so this is my Kb, this is my Ka, who's stronger? Well, the HF is stronger. Why? The K value literally just measures strength. If you ever want to compare strengths, just compare K values. All right, so a solution contains 0.1 molar HF and 0.1 molar NAF. Remember, concentration and K values determine pHs and H plus concentrations and anhydroxic concentrations. What are we? Well, we are acidic. Why? Because we have the same concentration, but my Ka value for the acids are bigger, so I'm acidic. A solution contains 0.1 molar HF and 1 molar NEF. What are, what are we? Well, are we acidic? Are we basic? Are we neutral? Well, our concentration of our acid, our base is up. So that means this forward reaction will, will be more vigorous. But is the 1 molar enough to contract the increased strength of the acid? I don't know. For certain. I need to do some math on this guy to make sure. And I'm going to say probably not. Now it might be 10 times more concentrated, but this looks like strength-wise looks like about a million times more strong. I'm thinking we're still going to be acidic, and I know we are. But at this point, if I didn't know, I'd just say this. Can't say for sure. 
one molar HF and one molar, one molar well, we have more strength and more concentration, so we're going to be acidic. And I'm mixing these things together, okay? Uh, no HF and 0.1 molar of this. Well, because we don't have any of that, all we have is this. You can be the biggest, toughest kid in the block, but if everyone else is just kindergartners, then you're going to be tough. And that's this guy. Okay. So, and then 0.1 molar of this and none of that. Well, then, of course, we're just acidic. So understanding how these two things battle back and forth is really the clear... It's really the hard thing to kind of understand and really to, to grip. But once you do, that's the main concept. Calculations, we do them, we forget them. This is a more of a big idea than battling back and forth. All right, let's say example here. We have 0.15 moles per liter of Schweitzic acid. I is 3.4%. How do we do this? Okay, well, we have 0.15. And I'm going to do three, it ionizes, so it's minus x, water's not playing a role, 0, 0, plus x, plus x. So x is 3.4% of 0.5, so 0.15 times 0 0.034, and what do we get? So we got 0.15 times 0 0.034 equals 0 0.0015. 0 0.0015. 0 0.0051. So that's this guy right here. So that equals X. So what's the Ka? What's the pH? For that matter, we'll add that in there. Okay. Let's solve it out. Okay, so pH is this guy. I'm just going to plug this guy in here. 0 0.0051. 0 0.0051, 0 0.0051, and what do we get? I'm just going to do this subtraction with my calculator here. 0.15 minus the previous is 0.14, pretty close, right? So it hasn't changed much. 1449, 0.0051, 0.0051. Take the negative log of this guy to get the pH. Negative log 0.0051 will give me my pH. You'll note that just on that number 0.051, it's acidic because it's bigger than e negative 7. So negative log 0.0051 is 2.29, which of course is acidic. Okay. What's the Ka value of this acid? So remember, you got to remember that any time we want a Ka value, I need to pro proliferate my expression. So let's do that right here. The Ka equals the concentration of Sz negative Schweitzig H3O plus HSZ, which means I need to fill this table, which I did. So this is just going to be 0 0.0051. I'm going to square it because I got two of them. And then 0 0.1449. And that will equal this guy. Okay. So we got here 0 0.0051 squaring this thing. Divide by 0.1449. And we get 0.1.7. 9 equals 1.79 e to the negative, I think it would be 4th, negative 4th, I see my calculator correctly. Okay, so now I've got my Ka, I've got my pH, who's stronger? Well, the acid's stronger because of the Ka value, and it teeter totters on 1.0 e to the 7th. If Sz negative is stronger, um, so, in this case, uh, it's not stronger, okay? So, is it possible to be acidic if SC is weaker, weaker, then could we ever be acidic? The answer is yes, because there's two factors. There's K, but there's also concentration. So, we could be 
um, a stick or a basic, depending on how much we adjust the concentrations. We can't change the K values. We can change the the the, uh, the concentrations. And okay, finally, what does it mean if, if we have a large if an acid has a larger Ka? Okay, so again, this is the strength, kind of wrapping around again. HA is this guy, HB is this guy. Could HB actually be more acidic? Yes, because concentration and Ka values come to play here. This guy's got a smaller K. A, but so I would really need to crank up the concentration now. I'm saying this might be so, you know, the concentration might be unrealistically large at this point, but possible. Okay. Um, again, reiterating what we just mentioned. Okay. All right. Let's try another example here. Getting towards the end here. If we have a sample of point molar has a pH of 4.1, determine the percent ionization. So we're turning, and we're not doing a ton of, you'll see, not a ton of calculations here. Just showing simple examples, and you need to practice them. But here's an example. So HX plus H2O yields H3O plus plus X negative. Initial stoic ratio end. This goes here. What else is? Here's the pH, okay? The pH 10 to the negative 4.1 equals the pH. Let's cut that out. So second log negative 4.1 is 7.9 e to the negative fifth. 7.9 e to the negative fifth. Most clear. And that represents the H plus ion concentrations at equilibrium. That's here. 1.79 e to the negative fifth. And of course, if that's that, well, this is also 1.79 e to the negative fifth. Not playing a role. 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x. And of course, we now know x, which of course you could subtract off of here. But we're going to use our shortcut rule. If you would like, you can. So the Ka value equals um, the concentration of 1.79 e to the negative fifth squared over 0.1. And you could take it minus the 1.79 e to the negative fifth if you'd like. But you will find your answer will not be a whole lot different. I'm going to square that previous thing on my calculator here and divide it by 0.1. And I'm getting... 6.3 e to the negative, negative 6.3 e to the negative 8. I believe that to be correct. Now we've my Ka value of this particular asset. All right, let's, uh, let's try another example here, if there is one. I believe this is the last question. Just a general idea here again. Big understanding, they have calculations, true, but there's some understanding stuff. 50 milliliters of a sample of 0.1 molar HA is, has a pH of 3. 50 milliliters of a 0.1 molar HB has a pH of 4.5. Hmm. And uh, I could add another one in here, which would be if I had a 0.1 molar has, so let's say HC, I'm going to add this guy in here. Um, so let's say I have a 0.1 molar solution of HC as a pH of 1. Oof. Okay. Which of the following is true about these two acids? I don't know. This guy's being left out. Uh, the Ka of HA is bigger than the Ka of HB. Well, they're the same concentration. More acidic. Yes. HB is stronger than HA. Uh, no, because that doesn't jive with the Ka values. Is it possible for HB to have a lower pH than HA? Well, yes, just have to change concentrations. And what about this guy? What do you know about this guy? Well, if it's 0.1 and it's got a pH of 1, that means this guy is a strong acid. 
Okay. If I had a question about that. Either way, I think we'll be stopping there. Now keep in mind that um, this presentation covers concepts and some calculations, but you need to go over what the these calculations again. See if you different versions and try them on your own. Okay. Thank you very much.